up on the lift. Let's get the transfer case out. Hole going into the floor there. Look at that. Oh, switch pro. Yeah. The dog being a dumb shit in the back. Right, yeah, so that's all out. Drive shafts on the ground. Transfer cases in the back of the car. So take it home and build it. All right, guys, so here we are on my transfer case. This is the J shift, so you go down, over, neutral, low. And what we're gonna do is exactly what we did on the last one. This one here, this comes off. All these bolts here come out, and I'm gonna pull the shift lever off as well. And then, uh, yeah. We'll uh, do exactly what we did on the one we weren't supposed to be working on yet. All right, guys. So I took out both of the sensors for the high, low, four, and two. Um, did the exact procedure that we did before: uh, snap ring in the front. This one here, um, my screen was nice and clean. I did clean it out more. Magnet barely had any metal on it. And I'm looking at that gear that was problematic on the other one, and it is fucking gorgeous in mine. So, we're going to pop this clip out. Oh, this one has a synchro, too, where the other one did not. So, I don't know. Different styles of transmissions, or sorry, transfer cases. Um, it does say to remove it. So, we're going to take this clip out. Come down here, take this clip out. Pop the old shaft rooney out. Then switch all the gizzards and guts. Remember we did this on the other one and it magically appeared. Um, so yeah, that's uh, the next step. I'm not showing you too much of this because I already did when I fucked up on the other one. So I am making sure that this one's nice and clean inside because when I reseal this, I do not want to drop a fucking oil on that thing. So this will be fucking empty of oil. I will lube this up pretty good. But anything that comes in contact with any of this shit will be empty. So, yeah, that's uh, where we are right now. Alright guys, here's where we're at. We got it reinstalled. I dumped oil all over it. Um, synchro's back in. Uh, yeah, the whole thing's good. This cover plate, I got the new seal into it. So the seal that the kit comes with goes in your transfer case. And I believe it's because the diameter of this shaft is different. So they give you a new seal. Um, in the instructions, they say to be careful of this gap. If it's not all the way, don't suck it in with the impact gun. Fuck that shit. Get your half-inch gun and run that bitch home. Or you can kind of wiggle the seal so it goes onto this, slide it up, and then you can turn the shaft as you're applying hand pressure, and it'll go right up against it. Um, if you use the half-inch gun, full disclosure, you will fuck shit up. Potentially. Allegedly. But fuck it. Live life on the edge. Um, so here we are. Now we have two units that are starting to look similar. Um, the old shaft is right here. And yeah, I'm going to put the gizzards here back in it. Oil pump. I cleaned out the strainer. Look how sexy that thing looks. Anyways, uh, yeah, I've cleaned all the mating surfaces. I blew out the entire inside of the case before I put that in with brake cleaner, then hit it with air. You do not want to use rags on this aluminum. It will catch, it will put clumps of the rag in there. It will go down, it will clog this fucking filter. You will starve the oil pump and you will burn the whole fucking unit up. Wow, doomsday. I should be a salesman. Anyways, um, yeah, so she's looking sexy. We're making progress. I'm happy. And um, put the magnet back in over here, and away we go. All right, so now that that's all done, our next step, because I have the twin st or the single stick J-shift pattern, we need to cut this ear off. Shoop. That's going to give us our high and low and our four and two independently of each other instead of needing to fucking give it the old pull and twist um so yeah that's the next step i'm gonna do my best to protect this of course i'm gonna soak all my rags with brake cleaner first that helps to absorb all the metal shavings um and as it's shooting those hot sparks when those rags catch on fire you know that they're catching all the sparks 
So we're gonna give that a try first and see how it goes. Just like that, nothing to it. Now the ears are off. I went a little bit more than the existing, just by a hair. Let's get it the fuck out of the way. So that's where we're at. Now we're gonna use our cleanup tools and get in here. I use a carbide, um, really fucking like this thing. Part number uh, CSS01. The fuck cares what it is? It's carbide scraper. I'm sure a fucking Harbor Freight one would work just fine. I like to overpay for things. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at. All right, guys, learn from my mistake. Uh, it said to shift this thing in the low. I tried shifting it in the low. It fought me, so I used this ring as leverage to pop it in to fight the detent. Um, and shit hit the fucking fan. All these things blew out of it. Uh, it came out of here. It's a fucking bitch to get it back in. Um, so what we have here is there's some offbeat teeth in this. So it's kind of missing a tooth in between there. Those line up directly with these. And these cogs go in there. So what I did is I unscrewed this. A plug over here. Sorry, I'm such a wobbly fucker. I don't even care, though. Um, and a pin fell out of it. Which is fucking gone now, too. I am fucking losing my marbles. It's not in there. Shit! Here it is. Getting fucking pissed. So, I unscrewed this. There was a spring, of course, and then there was this. And I was like, oh, that's a weird detent. I should mark it. That goes in the yellow one. Cool. Go to go back together and the fucking twat won't go in. Here's the deal. That slides in and goes in here. So what had happened is the ball right there had fallen into the fucking hole down at the bottom there and was just sitting there. So that's where I fucked up. Yeah. Good times to be had by all. So, pin goes across, ball goes in there, and then spring goes in, and yada yada. It's in the Toyota diagram as well. Um, this sucks to get back on. You gotta line it up, and then you push the keys up and in. We're not, we're not done. And then I still have to figure out where the clip that I lost went. I told you guys I was a fucking idiot, so... So the one person that's still watching this, if that can save you some time, cool. Because it just took me like an hour of looking at the diagram to figure out what happens here. Now, there is a check ball in there that seats in the bottom of this shift fork. And it slides in and it hits the correct detents. So, that's a, that's a thing. Sweet. Okay guys, let me show you something that's not in the directions too. I don't know how this thing is designed to work. I mean, I got the triple stick option. Um, inside the hole, there is a detent. And when this thing is in uh, four wheel drive, sorry, two wheel drive, it locks you out. So, is that right? I don't know. When you're in one of the things, you can't shift it independently. There's a detent right there that's still going to make it so you have to be in full wheel drive in order to activate low range. And uh, I'm not down with that. I want two wheel drive low if I want fucking two wheel drive low. So I'm simply going to pull that pin out, uh, which I've been trying to fight with this for a few minutes now. There's the pin. And what that does is at the bottom of the shaft, there's a, a, a rib there, and it won't let it go past. It holds it up in there, won't let me click down to activate fun mode. Um, so, yeah, that pin's not going back in. That's step one. Step two, these little fucking teeth fired out everywhere, and I'm struggling to figure out which way they go. I'm trying to see what feels right, what looks right. I think they go this way. I think this is how I had them. 
but it just doesn't look right and it does work better the other way so as soon as I figure this out I've been all over fucking everything I can find all the the blow-ups I've been on Mitchell I've been on all data I've been on Toyota um, is slightly struggling to figure this one out as soon as I do we're good and I just put it in with dirt so now I gotta re-clean it all fuck off all right I'll be back so I followed the diagram the little portion of the tooth is up the big portion of the back well the the raised edge is in and then the big lip is on the way down and if I pull this up they lock in Everything appears good. Pull out and they're in like that. So I'm going to roll with it. I'm going to call Northwest on a Monday and hope to fucking God I'm right because it's going back together right now. Alright, here it is already to go back together. I have to call Northwest Monday. I got these things so that the little end is up. The side of it towards the top has the external detent on it and then the fat parts on the bottom. I'm pretty sure that's how I took it apart. All the diagrams I've seen look that way. Um, so yeah. And then also did the delete in here, uh, which is the detent pin, which I have no fucking clue. Here it is which stops you from selecting four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, um, high and low. It has to be in four-wheel drive in order to use low. Just don't pull the wrong fucking lever. It's pretty simple. Um, so I will be able to use two-wheel drive high and low and the doubler. So if I want to just put it in two-wheel drive and I don't know. Who the, who the fuck knows why, but it's an option. Um... Cleaned all the surfaces, sprayed everything out really good. Got a little bit of pooling oil in here coming out of the bearings. Um, not a big deal though. So yeah, she's uh, she's going back together now. So hopefully, uh, hopefully I'll be able to make sexy time with these two and put them together. All right, so we got our sensors back in up here. <clears throat> we got the yeah, flange back on here. That's all working properly. I've already gone through, made sure that clicking these things around give me engagement. On this gear, there's a end focus. There we are. It's got a real short flange on it, and then there's a deep flange. According to according to the instructions, it goes on there with the short flange on that side. In the deep dish over here. So I'm going to put the clip on, then I'm going to stand this pig up, and we're going to slap that little fucker into it, and a few of these little fucking studs here. And then this is going to slap on there, we're going to click, 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 and we're going to have low, low, high, low, detent, uh, and things are supposed to work. So let's hope. Okay, so we installed the simple studs into the transfer case. There's only a few threaded holes. The rest of it go into the threaded holes on this base plate. I just got a cock on my finger. Oh, yeah. Um, anyways, so that's there. We used uh, German Torx specs on these. Um, they're Guntheit. So just snugged them up pretty much. Let the washers collapse. Fucking go 400 foot-pounds on them. I'm a fat ass, so put some Gorilla Nut behind it. You can see how well everything fits in here. A little close right in there, but I can still get feeler gauges in there. Um, so yeah, they did say use sealant on this surface, which makes sense because in here, this is all open on the back side. So, I obviously don't want to fuck that up. So, uh, instructions say cut these nuts off if need be. Um, this one here might hit. Oh, I got your killer photo there, didn't I? Fucking asshole. So that one might hit. So I think we're going to shave that one right now. And then, uh, slap the old corcus together. 
Alright, so with the directions, I have to make sure that these offbeats are going to overlap this gear in here and go together. You also have to be careful up here for the split bearing that's down in there. Now, I packed the shit out of that thing with grease so it wouldn't have any issues. Um, but if it does, it does. That would suck. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this thing over on its side and that will give me enough wiggle room I don't have to worry about the bearing popping out and we should be solid other thing is um, this groove right here is for an o-ring and when that o-ring goes in you know they can get hung up and curl and whatever else so I typically will put a little sill glide on the mating surface that way that o-ring goes right into it sits properly and is solid so I'm gonna grab some sill glide and lube its butthole Here's the sill glide. It is safe on petroleum. Or petroleum free, I should say. It's just silicone. So I'll do a thin little goober in here. Not looking to soak its panties or anything. That's for that's for later. But yeah, so this is you know, I do this on all seals. Is it necessary? Probably not. Am I gonna do it anyways because I fucking want to? You bet your ass I am. And I have not had seals rolled before you know even when I was doing this professionally for 30 seconds um, so yeah there's that uh, one other thing guys on the other side of this plate I scuffed it all up with with this shit here I use these scotch pads on a lot of things um, I would rather it have a good edge to bite into and when you do it do a little piece right here. It takes the finish off fast. So now we get a dull finish right there. But I'd rather not have leaks than have something super pretty and shiny. And I am hiccuping like crazy. Anyways, time to flop this thing over onto its belly and hit her from behind. We're going to set the other gear in there. This is all into play. I got spinny spinny. When this pops out, I have low range. So we are we are good to go. So, yeah. Alright guys, here it is. Eco Crawl Box built. So, right now we got all the sensors in. This here, I need to put it back onto there. But I'm holding off until it's in the truck. So I can see if I need to extend this forward or what I need to do with that. Um, instructions were less than clear on that. Also, there were no instructions for the triple stick setup. I went onto their website and looked it up. And this is the configuration they had. Um, so that's how I did it. This bolt is snug. Uh, it is a nylon lock washer. I'm gonna put a little paint pen on it and we're gonna watch it. I'll probably end up red loctiting it. Um, there's quite a bit of slop in these levers. This is definitely not how it was. Well, you can't judge on that. Not how Toyota was. I mean, you guys know Toyota is tight tight tolerances this is pretty sloppy and we'll see whatever it's fucking it's going on 40s so i don't really give a shit but yeah so i installed this on there um the little cover plate goes forward you really can only do it one way because these bolts are further apart than those bolts same thing here further apart than the front bolts this is the new breather for the eco box and then the breather for this guy here um right there so, yeah, I got my little nubby nubbies after I figured out what the pattern is. Low neutral high, low high, two wheel, four wheel, and I'm bringing them the shift knob in the other truck because I want it engraved in the same kind of pattern as on this. I just like the look of it. So, yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. Alright guys, so I got the truck here at work. Um, tempted to put the T case in and it uh, damaged the seal. Then I realized that it cut part of the floor out, which wasn't in the instructions. So I'm going to end up taking it home, cutting more of this out. I'm just trying to get this thing stabbed. So for right now, I got the bar loosened up. I got my wife running me a new seal because it's 6 o'clock at night and 
and we'll hopefully get this thing stabbed back in. All right, guys, so here it is. It is installed, it is in the vehicle. The wires are not long enough in any way to make it. So I have a Volkswagen pigtail over there on the floor. I'm gonna cut these all up and I'm gonna lengthen them so that all the factory brackets still work. I just measured for my drive shaft. In this application with these plates, it is six and a half inches that you have to add to the front drive shaft and subtract from the rear drive shaft. And that's measuring from the flange to the center support bearing. Um, up top, I'm sure there's some modifications that I'm gonna have to do. Uh, what my intention is, is I'm gonna take this thing back home tomorrow. I'll bring the trailer into work and bring this thing back home, do some wiring and shit on it, and then I'm gonna do some fabrication up top. I don't know if you can see it, but in the floor, I mean, there's literally no clearance. That thing's up against the floor. And then I'm not super stoked on the fitment into the floor um, for the levers, but whatever. I mean, it is what it is. So I'll uh, catch you guys up on the next adventure. All right, so in the process of lengthening the wires, um, these particular wires doesn't matter if it's one way or the other because it's a compression switch, so it's either on or off. Um, there is a three wire sensor for the uh, speedometer. I already lengthened that, made sure to put the right wires in the right spot. Um, I do stagger my wires, that way it fits in the wire loom perfectly. Um, I'm not going to show you too much of that just because if you can't figure out how to do the wiring then you should probably not attempt this in the first place. Um, but I will show you the finished product. After this, we have uh, the new drive shafts are here. I just got to pop those in it. I've already filled all the fluids last night. Um, we're back in my garage, so it's a little crowded in here. There's the triple stickums. Uh, I have the knobs being currently sent out, being CNC'd. So they're going to come back and be engraved to match this. I want to match this. So I'm doing the border in CNC. It's going to be L. Uh, it's going to be L and H, and then it's going to say front and rear on it. Uh, and then one will have L, N, and H, and then four wheel drive, two wheel drive. But I want it to look like Toyota. So um, I'm going to kind of mimic it. I don't know what I'm doing with this boot yet. I don't want to cut the shit out of it, but I might have to uh, modify it in some way. I haven't figured that out yet. We'll get there when we get there. Right now, I just want to make it move. Um, I have other projects going on here, which will be another video later on. But yeah, anyways, uh, taco is priority. So I will uh, keep you up to date. Okay, so here we are. I screwed this knob on it just temporarily. Um, I cut them. So this knob is going to be even with this knob now, which should be good. I mean, they're they're right here. That's high low. Four wheel drive, two wheel drive. That's still going to be high. I got them adjusted so that there's plenty of clearance here. Look, that's a full penis length. Um, and then. This one here it goes over fifth gear. It just misses it. If I didn't cut it, it was smacking into it up here. And if I was aggressive enough, like I could still get it to hit kind of, but it would pop it into neutral. So um, that's the orientation that they'll be when we're driving. Uh, so this is in high, this is in high, this is in two wheel drive. I did thread this down further. I'm going to cut it off right here. That'll drop that knob down a little bit. I might even go down to here, but I got to be a little bit higher than that. So um, I don't know the final yet. Uh, I started this project in uh, right before Christmas. And here we are. It's the middle of January. I've had quite a few things come up regardless of this project but uh, I drove this thing yesterday 
went up a steep, steep hill in back of my house, and we're in Southern California, so we've been dealing with the flooding. And I went up in low, low two-wheel drive, and it fucking performed killer. Um, I had nasty vibration noises, and in there, that block right there is the top of the transfer case that came with the truck. Um, I had to raise the floorboard. You can see I got a little gap on my plastic panel now. I had to raise the floorboard because it was vibrating underneath it. And yeah, that was kind of a pain in the dick. Um, all I did is I took a pry bar this way underneath, hammered it underneath it, it bent the floor up. And you can't even really tell inside, but it made all the difference and now it's quiet. The rubber boots that go on here, Oh, before I forget, I'm walking around with it. Here's the tap that I used. You can clearly read that. It's a half inch by 13 NC. Um, it fit the threads, made the threads. Definitely doesn't look like the factory that they had. So kind of a do-it-yourself or shit box rather than professional machine shop. But we have, this is the boot that came with it. The amount of noise difference is a lot without having this boot on. So I'm gonna try and just slice the sides of this boot right down there. That way it covers as much as I can and I'm gonna have to open this hole up down here and uh, kind of hog her out and show her who's boss. I might do the same thing. I might just cut these and see what happens. But I don't want it to be pushing pressure on it all the time, wearing out the synchros and so forth. So we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna drive this thing for a couple days. I don't have the skid plates on underneath it. Um, I'm gonna drive it for a couple days and see how it goes, make sure everything's good before I put it all back together. I wanted to show you a little trick too. So the bars in there, they are a pain in the ass to get to. So what I did is I had to notch my floor here. So here the floor is notched, there the floor is notched, so it would clearance this. And then I kind of just nibbly nibblied. This is the what I had to hack at the shop in order to get this up in one piece. Otherwise I would have had to put the crawl box in and then that. But if I'm ever trail side and I need to get this out, I'm undoing the transmission bolts and pulling the whole unit out. So to get in here, let's see if I can get you guys some light. Here we go. I use this. 3 8 uh, extension, chrome swivelly. Chrome swivel was the key here. And I get it in there. Let me show you here real quick. All right, so it's on there, and then I could just turn this, and I can get adjustment out of it. So that's the only way. I mean, getting a wrench in there, it, it wasn't working. Um, that's how I adjusted that. It's so that when I come back here, it doesn't smack into this lever. Because when they're together, that's going to create a vibration. So, oops, I punched my CB. That's all right. Or fucking whatever that thing is. It's not a CB. Um, yeah, so... That's kind of where we're at as of now. Uh, I'm going to drive it again a week and then put it back together and just hope that everything's good. Um, I originally had some stiffness when I was driving, going into four-wheel drive and two-wheel drive, but that seems to have cleared itself out, and I'm thinking it's just the grease that I used on it because it was the first couple times. But, yeah, it's in. It's driving. And uh, next I will be doing the, the rubber boots and boots with the fur. So I'll uh, catch you guys up next time I do something. And then I'm going to put it back together. But before I put it back together, this here is my, I forget what they call it. It is what it is. It's a UF or VF or something radio. i would got to resecure it in there a little further. Um, that way it looks a little nicer and then I gotta secure it because when I installed that I was in Moab and I bought it brought it with me and shoved it in there uh, with a couple of crude tools like a utility knife and something else so I'm um, gonna clean that all up professionally put that in there 
uh, well, to the best of my ability. And then uh, put everything back together, try to make it look factory. I still do not have the actual knobs I'm going to be using. Um, halfway tempted to get a couple more of these knobs and run them because I like the look of the knob and I can just rub the rub the wording off of it on top but I don't know we'll we'll see what I do because the factory knobs are just so uncomfortable but yeah so there we go okay guys explanation time this is uh, the transfer case and doubler on the bench after about two weeks of driving the truck around. I could not get the vehicle to engage full wheel drive while moving in any way, shape, or form. So, me being me, I wanted to make real sure that everything was okay and to figure out the problem. I called over to Northwest Fab and uh, tried to bounce it off of them. They are extremely knowledgeable over there. Um, I can't tell you how good their customer service is it, it's it's amazing the support they give you however he was equally as stumped as I was we went through everything and we're discussing what it could be and other options and he said once you get it apart here's my email address uh, I don't work on the weekends but I'm here to help you email me and I, and I will respond and that was incredible customer service however Took this thing apart after work one day, gutted it on the bench. I'm going through everything, thinking it could be the keyways, it could be any number of things. Um, here it is all apart, and I'm going through everything, only to find out that when I press on the synchro, it wasn't locking up on the gear like it should. And for those of you that aren't aware, what's supposed to happen is the synchro's got a little bit of movement in it and it has a cone shape to it that binds up on the gear in front of it. This was not happening. Uh, long story short, I found the problem. Basically what was happening is I was not using the right gear oil. I used a gear oil with a limited slip in it and this was the cause of my whole problem. So put new fluid and fix the problem. All right, so here's what we got going back together. I didn't put that in yet. I'm just trying to see if this all works. Um, what I did is I cut off to the second rib. And then on the bottom of the boot, I cut off the circle. I did cut it as wide as I could on both sides so that it clears everything. And it is still kind of hitting a little bit, but it's not, not obstructing anything. So I got two options. When it comes to this, I can have this boot up here on top of this, and on top of this one. The only thing that I don't like is if I'm in low and I'm in second, it's kind of pushing on the shifter, and I don't want it to get into the synchros. So I just pull its little panties down here, undo the skirt, and then we're there. So now I go up. Everything seems to be working the way it needs to, no real resistance, and I'm going to retain a lot more noise cancellation than what I had previous driving this thing around for the past week. Um, I think that's going to be my ticket and how I'm going to run it. So yeah, four wheel drive still goes in and out. Uh, even though I had the fluid issue on this thing, I'm still not going into full wheel drive while driving as easy as I should. Um, I might have wore out the synchros having the bad uh, fluid in it, but you know what? Honestly, I'm going to stop, pull it in, and I'm going to rock on. So it is what it is. At least I know there's nothing out of place in the transfer case or of any concern to me. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where I'm at now. And uh, I'm going to continue to go together and I'll show you how I get the leather put in there. Don't really know yet, but it'll happen. Alright, so here it is. So, I just sliced it straight down the side and I'm pulling it around this back lever here. And I'm going to put a button right there. And that should give me everything that I need 
to be able to achieve flexibility and sexability. So it'll button in right there. Most of the time when I'm driving, it'll be pretty good. I mean, I'm not upholsterous. Um, so, yeah, now I got that in there. I sank the radio in further, so now it's below there. I can get to all my Switch Pro and everything down here. Um, get to all my, my goody 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 goodies. Even though this button here, the front locker, doesn't work yet, it will. It, right now it's on the radio. So I gotta redo that. But all these other ones are set to come on with the ignition on. That's set to that. Getting off track here. Back to this. Um, yeah, so I now should have a nice quiet ride on the way to work, even though this thing screams at 3,000 RPMs going down the freeway. That's 60 miles an hour. Uh, here's the underneath. I got my skid plates back on. So we got the skid plates on. And then transfer case is most definitely susceptible to damage now. I'll fix that tomorrow. Um, I did have to cut my, you can see it, right down there I had to cut this whole lip off in order to clear the transfer case because the T case used to be six inches this way which put the drain of it right here so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock this down a bit and then I'm going to come over and ear up so I'm going to basically follow this only at a little bit of an angle um, I think I'm going to tackle that tomorrow night that'll be my fun project all right guys just picked up the knobs and they look legit Yes, sir. I'm a big fan. Sweet. Get them thrown on there on my way to work. <laughs> All right, guys. So it's currently uh, just about May. I think uh, Monday is May 1st. At this point, I have been to San Hollow. We went to the Wrecker Games on this. We've been out to a local place near us. We've been to Coral Canyon a couple times, hit Sidewinder a few times. This Eco Crawl box is, it's amazing. Uh, I have obviously a five speed and it makes everything so much more controllable. Going uphill, downhill. When I am locked in, I am able to just kind of put it in either first or second gear and low and low and have the rear locker on and this thing just walks down everything without the locker on when i start doing two wheel action or something like that it will kind of cause it to go quickly and then catch and it's rough but with the locker locked in in the rear it doesn't do that um i have so much more control to be able to crawl up things down things i can be in the middle of an obstacle toss it into reverse and walk right back without having to slip the clutch i mean this is it's almost like wheeling with training wheels um it's incredible i have lost footage that i don't know where it is uh i am new to this whole thing so i realize i swear a little bit maybe excessive amounts um maybe say some pretty crude things so i gotta work on that um but it, it's who i am and doesn't make excuses so what we got here here's the handles again they're they're not all the way tight yet they still have some play but I am very happy with the way that they came out however in the factory handles you have a low a square a line square line square they kind of butched it a little bit <laughs> um, so now I have lines where the square should be but I mean unless you're really analyzing it overall this the way that it is chiseled in there matches the factory uh, very well that's the factory font like they did they did a good job they charged a lot they uh, took forever but I mean it is what it is so here is the configuration of how I run a lot um, that's in low range, low range, and full wheel drive. Uh, 
I don't know if it's the right thing to do, but what I've found is when I am driving, I'll often leave this in high and then I transfer the transfer case into low. My mindset behind that is I don't want to increase the torque going into the transfer case while it's in high gear. I view high gear as kind of a weaker gear. Um, it's probably completely wrong, but that's how I view it. So I always put the transfer case itself into low first and then I'll activate this one. This one here kind of goes in and out. While I'm off-roading though, it's in low, it's in four-wheel drive, and then this is the variable, like coming up to an obstacle, get through the obstacle, pull it out of there, and then, you know, continue on. But when I'm in low, I'm able to use second gear, which is something I never could do. And I'm also in third gear, it's just slightly, slightly lower than being in just low range by itself. Um, so I don't use that very often, but we were just in mud the other day. I put it in low second gear and just let her eat and it, it just ripped through a mud hole. Uh, so I was pretty impressed in general rule of thumb. This is how it is. I still have to install a button down here. That's what I decided to do is put a button at the very bottom here. So it kind of clicks over it and that'll help hold this shut. Um, not, you know, perfectly, but it's going to work. Um, when this is shut, it actually isolates off a lot more noise because I do have a, a relatively open hole where we cut through the rubber gasket, so closing this up is nice. Uh, I can't recommend this enough. If you're thinking about doing it, do it. This is the first heavy mod that I've done to the vehicle, aside from gearing. It's got 488s in it right now that still was not low enough for me to do what I needed to do. But with the doubler in there, I feel like I'm fully in control of this truck finally, and I am absolutely loving it. Uh, we are going on 40s. We have, so I have the tires. I have a bunch of the three link stuff already. I'm, you know, we're cruising on this thing. So. Um, we were originally going to be doing the Rubicon because of all the rain we've had this year. The Rubicon's probably going to be a mess, so we have switched over and we're going back to Moab. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push this thing as hard as I possibly can, uh, find the limits. I kind of know where they are, but I mean, I don't care if I break something at this point. Um, we are going to find some limits and show you what it can do slightly modified versus heavily modified. And uh, I think it'll be kind of cool to see all the things that it can do. Um, yeah. So I'm going to take you guys along for a journey on that. And again, I'm going to try and clean myself up here a little bit and, uh, you know, talk a little nicer. Maybe not swear as much. So if you want to watch these videos, you can watch them with children in the, in the background. But no guarantees. Uh, I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a mechanic mouth, so it is what it is. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this. Uh, I'm going to get you some footage of, like, actually out there and doing some stuff pretty quick. Uh, my next video that I'm going to edit is of us using the doubler um, in San Hollow. We went up a couple things that this would not have gone up in uh, without the doubler. If I was just in low range four wheel drive with the locker on, I would have been slipping the clutch a ton. I would have had to slam into things where now I can just crawl right up to it and use the throttle when I need to. I can bump when I need to. Like I said, it is training wheels. So I just wanted to kind of cue you guys in on that and show you some of the stuff and update you and tell you about all this. Um, the other thing is, you know, I had removed the transfer case when I was having trouble going into four-wheel drive when I initially put it back together it wasn't going into four-wheel drive still and that was remedied um, the fluid worked its way through there got the limited slip garbage out of it and now I can pull it in at you know 20 30 40 miles an hour if I'm coming up to an obstacle I just yank it in and then do what I got to do like if I'm going through sand or whatever I can switch it on the fly um, the other thing is, you know, obviously you have to be stopped to go into low range. Uh, so I can easily just pull them both at the same time. But 
it's working incredibly and I'm definitely open to suggestions. I'm thinking about painting it this same color and doing the rods black. Um, when I do the 40s, I have the doubler currently in the center holes. Um, there, you can clock it differently. I went center hole on it. I'm going to go to the right, which is a 10 degree offset, I believe, the, the 7 or 10. Uh, and that'll bring the transfer case up just a little bit because I do have a skid plate installed underneath it now that I made in a hurry. It just kind of drops down, comes out, and then goes back. Um, I can show you that actually. But I need to get the transfer case back up and see, you know, out of the way of things because I don't want anything below the frame rail. So there's the, uh, my fix to it. You can see it hangs down a little bit. I put a couple filler pieces in there. This was done in about, you know, 20 minutes maybe. I threw it in there real quick before we went out to Coral Canyon. So that's all made out of scrap metal I had laying around. Um, I re-angled this piece here, came up. You know, I got to put a gusset in there, but all of this has got to come out because I have the Northwest Fat, or sorry, uh, a WFO cross member for the lower control arms and it's getting some other things done to it but thank you guys for sticking with me on this video I'm gonna get you a lot of footage of uh, wheeling this thing and how fun it is now um, as far as a stock Tacoma goes before this people would always just be amazed at areas that I went to and what we went up we did Hell's Gate and I got footage of people talking a bunch of shit and saying oh yeah yeah that's cool have a good time buddy and then they're like i gotta watch this this dude's gonna roll and uh yeah luckily i didn't roll but when i got to the top everybody was cheering so i heard all the shit they were talking about me but it is what it is people are gonna do that um yeah so i'll throw together a video of us out at the record games and then i'll show some other stuff that we're doing couple months here we're going to be going out to Moab like I said and then the day we come back she's going into the garage and uh, she's going under the knife I've never done a three link kit before I've never done a solid axle swap before but that's what's next on this old girl we're gonna cut all the good stuff out of it as of right now everything in here is pretty clapped out it's I got play in my upper control arm bushings, I have play in the lowers, ball joints are new, I don't play with those, those are always going to be good, tie rod ends are good, this old man emu stuff, I have not been impressed with, it's, it's bad, um, when I tear the truck apart I'll show you, the rear leaf springs are buckled and bowing and doing everything else. It was, I, I want to say, what did I pay for this thing? 1400 bucks maybe for this lift. It was not worth it. It got me through a couple years, but it's badly, badly damaged. So we'll tear into all that. But uh, yeah, once again, for the third or fourth time I've told you guys, thank you for watching the video. Thank you for, you know, sticking with me on this one. And uh, I'm going to work on my skills here a little bit, get you guys some better footage. And uh, we'll do some really cool stuff with this truck. Thanks, guys.